Coming up on today's episode of Airborne Unlimited, SpaceX lands another one. A great aviator and friend is lost. The Russians are cutting the taxi service to the space station. Hello, I'm Christopher C. Odom. It's May 31st, 2016, and this is Airborne Unlimited. On Friday afternoon of last week, SpaceX did it again. After a successful launch of their Falcon 9 rocket carrying a Thicom 8 communication satellite, they successfully returned the booster to, to a platform floating on the ocean. SpaceX has now demonstrated their ability to do this three consecutive times within the last two months. According to reports, the satellite was carried to its geostationary transfer orbit, which required the first stage to perform a series of engine burns to bring it back to Earth on target. Because this launch and recovery occurred in the daytime, the videos clearly show the pinpoint accuracy of its touchdown. Commenting on the landing, SpaceX's Elon Musk said in a tweeted message, rocket landing speed was close to design max and used up contingency crush core, hence back and forth motion. Okay, but some risk of tipping. It's hard not to think about the irony and the excitement about this landing in the early days of the 1960s when the space race was full of speed. Rocket launches were the big story, but now it's the rocket powered landings that have enamored us all. How things have changed. We're sad to say that the air show community has suffered its second recent tragedy as longtime warbird pilot and industry good guy, Bill Gordon, did not survive the ditching of the American Air Power Museum P-47 he was flying last Friday. Early reports indicate there may have been some sort of engine failure that resulted in his ditching the aircraft in the Hudson River, not far from the scene of the U.S. air ditching a few years back in 2009. William Gordon of Key West, Florida, had decades of experience in the air show and war bird demonstration roles he expertly played for tens of thousands of people over the years. Gordon's flight was reportedly part of the three-ship photo mission as part of the festivities involved with the Jones Beach Air Show. An accident investigation is underway by the FAA and NTSB. We at ANN join in with so many others in expressing our sadness and condolences to Bill's family members. After the break, the U.S. can no longer look to Russia for astronaut transportation. Since the early days of powered flight, pilots have struggled with landing and crosswinds. In fact, crosswinds and wind gusts cause more landing accidents than fog, thunderstorms, and icing combined. That's where the Redbird X-Wind SE comes in. By placing pilots in gusty crosswind conditions for extended periods of time, the X-Wind SE gives instructors all the time they need to teach the pilot the proper techniques for landing in crosswind conditions. For more information on Redbird X-Wind SE and Redbird's entire line of flight training devices, visit www.redbirdflightsimulation.com. There's a difference between charting a steady course and pushing for the ceiling. And for nearly a century, Hartzell Propeller has been defining that difference. It's in our passion for engineering and research and our dedication to testing the limits of performance. We are built on honor. We are Hartzell Propeller. Welcome back. If you'd like to be a supporter of Airborne Unlimited, send an email to jim at aero-news.net. When the U.S. bailed out of its manned spaceflight program about four years ago with the grounding of our fleet of space shuttle aircraft, our government elected to pay the Russians to provide our astronauts transportation to and from the International Space Station. Now, according to the TASS, the official Russian news agency, the Russian space agency Roscosmos had said yet to extending their transportation agreement past the expiration date in 2018. According to report, Roscosmos Deputy Chief Sergei Sevilev told the media, though, that the agency will honor its commitments, but we have no plans for concluding new ones. The manned spacecraft programs of Boeing and SpaceX, which are intended to take over the shuttle's previous duties, are still in development, 
As of the latest reports, it's a toss-up as to which company will be the first to restart the launch and the recovery of the U.S. astronauts to the space station from U.S. soil. Every Tuesday, we're going to look ahead at some of the more interesting events in the aviation universe. Here's this week's Aero Calendar. An organization called Ladies Love Tail Draggers is holding their fly-in splash-in at Sulphur Springs Municipal Airport in Texas on June 2nd through the 5th. Their mission is to connect all women who love to fly tail draggers. Their flying will be filled with organized fun that includes a poker run, lots of food, and then more food, and organized tours of regional attractions. Everyone is welcome at the fly-in. Located in Woods Cross, Utah, June 3rd and 4th marks the Sky Park Aviation Festival and Expo being held at the Sky Park Airport. It's reported to be the largest annual aviation event in Utah and features aircraft manufacturers, flight schools, and aviation organizations all in one place. Manufacturers and vendors from all facets of aviation will be there. On June 3rd through the 6th, the Kirkland Air Force Base in Albuquerque is holding their 75th anniversary open house. Their first air show in five years runs on June 4th and 5th of the open house four-day event. And when they decided to hold the air show, they went first class. The U.S. Air Force Thunderbirds are the lead air show act, but the show is filled with other quality aviation demonstrations. Here's the best part. It's free! The Great Tennessee Air Show is next on our list and it runs June 3rd through 5th. The air show itself is headlined by the U.S. Navy Blue Angels and other acts and air events are top notch including a performance by Breitling Jet Team, an F-22 Raptor demonstration, the U.S. Air Force Heritage Flight, and other air show performers including the likes of Sean D. Tucker. After the messages. Has open season been declared on UAVs? Sandia introduces the new SAI 340 Quattro TSO'd airspeed, attitude, altitude, and slip. With integral backup battery, safety never looked so good. See it now at www.sandia.aero. Concord's recombinant gas RG series sealed battery technology produces a high performance battery with the advantages of being pre-tested and fully charged at the factory. Find out more about Concord's entire line of batteries at www.concordbattery.com. Concord, the heart of your aircraft. With so much news coming out of the aviation industry, we're summarizing some other interesting stories in a brief segment we call Around the Patch. Another recreational UAV has been shot down, and this time a young person was watching the first person video on an iPad. The 14-year-old was viewing the drone flight while his father flew it. It appears to have been shot down by a neighbor. The remains of a U.S. serviceman who went missing in the Vietnam War have been identified and is being returned to his family for burial with military honors. U.S. Air Force First Lieutenant Donald W. Brutch Jr. was piloting an F-105D aircraft when he was shot down. Asian business jet company, Deerjet, will become the operator of the world's first VVIP 787 business Boeing jet. Deerjet currently operates nearly 90 business jets and says this aircraft is the most high-end business jet in the world. Pan Am International Flight Academy has announced a discounted summer training program for ATP, CTP, and type rating training on the Boeing 737NG and Airbus Air 320. Participating students between June 1st and August 31st qualify to receive a tuition credit. Carleton University's Faculty of Engineering and Design and NAV Canada 
have teamed up to offer a joint professional short course on UAVs. The five-day course will be delivered at the NAV Center facility in Cornwall, Ontario from June 20th through June 24th. Well, that's it for today's trip around the patch. Now let's move on to the rest of the news. EAA and the commemorative Air Force have jointly announced that Fifi, the Boeing B-29 Super Fortress bomber of the World War II era, will return to EAA Air Venture this year. Thanks to the incredible effort of the CAF, Fifi has been on the air show circuit for 41 years. Fifi is the main star of the CAF Air Power History Tour, which regularly tours the U.S. bringing the sights, smells, and sounds of World War II aviation to Americans all ages. Fifi's dedicated crews volunteer thousands of hours to honor the sacrifice of the men and women of World War II and Korea. EAA's Jack Pelton said, We are very pleased that Fifi will once again be on display at Boeing Centennial Plaza at EAA Air Venture Oshkosh. Fifi will be there during the week. She will fly in the air shows and a limited number of rides will be available at the Appleton Airport during the Air Venture Week. And by the way, this year is Boeing's centennial celebration and there will be lots going on regarding this celebration. Well, that's our program for today. Remember to get comprehensive real-time 24-7 coverage of the latest aviation and aerospace stories anytime at aero-news.net. Remember that Airborne Unlimited is streamed daily, Monday through Friday, with additional breaking news bulletins for important stories that fall outside of our normal deadlines. Please join us and a growing roster of over 100 outstanding industry associations and organizations every weekday for the best in aviation and aerospace news. From the staff of the Aero News Network, the aviation world's most comprehensive news and information resource, I believe I can fly.